This topic here is an explanation about the military spending for the Cold War simulation. Although uh, we are talking about uh, remote learning in this example here, this would also, could also work uh, within the building as we're just simply talking about the military. Um, so for the most part, uh, we already know that the accountants are keeping track of how much money um, you know, people are getting um, and that money can be spent on health, food, uh, or military items. So again, when we're playing this game, uh, the only individual that should be leaving should be the uh, diplomat or the secretary of state. Um, if either of those individuals are coming to see me and they are trying to purchase weapons, uh, this is pretty much what you should expect. Um, for each uh, group, I will have a um, sheet that pretty much looks like this. As you see, we have uh, alpha in this example here. So this is for alpha. So we have the rounds uh, and we also have purchased items. So uh, keep in mind, according to the directions, when you're buying something, it's delayed. Uh, so students usually uh, get that item confused. You just can't go out and spend and buy items. As it tells you here, here military units come from industry. The politician must pay money and turn in his or her group spending uh, to the accountants. Military units are delayed. That's key, delayed. For example, if Group A puts 10 in industry during round one, then the following, uh, they can use that money to spend. So um, what's ultimately going on here, you would come up to uh, the, the teacher. Now, let's say in round one, you put $10 in industry. And that's going to get recorded. Now in round two, you are able to purchase items. How much can you purchase? Only $10. Why? Because you only put $10 here. And remember, it's delayed for one round only. So you can, of course, spend it here, here, here. But if you're not putting money in industry throughout, then you know, um, you know, you're only gonna, you're gonna have the 10 there. So let's just say now in this case you want to buy something. So uh, you know, we see the declaration of war card, satellite costs too much, anti-aircraft. The revolt card, but you need CIA. Remember, there are certain requirements here. So you want to buy the atom split. Okay, so the atom split cost eight bucks. So uh, in round one, you would go up to the teacher. You'd say, I'm going to put $10 in industry. And then in round two, if you are going to buy that item, you would simply go to the teacher and say, okay, I know I have $10 in industry. I would like to buy, um, you know, the atom split. So at that point, and this is a point that students usually get confused with. Um you know, at that point, you should now pay $8 for the item, which means things are kind of double the price. Uh, and then that would exhaust your $10, and now you only have two. Uh, and now you have spent eight bucks, and you would then get recorded the atomic split. Keep in mind, I may change the rule. I don't know um, how this is all going to play out. Um, but uh, I have also played this where if you put $10 here, uh, then you can just easily convert. So then I would take, uh, you'd say, okay, I want to convert my 10 into the atomic split. So then I would record atomic split. I would subtract this and then two. The difference is you're not paying for it twice. You know, you first have to put it in industry and then convert the industry into something that you can actually produce. So keep that in mind. Um, the directions do say that, uh, you know, give you that particular item. It says uh, ten dollars industry during round one. Then the following round, the previous place industrial money can be used. At which point, then you have to to pay there for that item. Um, so all of these items here are up for grabs, as well as all of these special things that are telling you uh, what what you're able to uh, accomplish. For remote learning, the accountants are going to have to keep track of what they have here, and I'm going to have to verify this. Um, you know, that way, uh, keep in mind, the accountants don't keep track of military, only the uh, teacher keeps track of, of military. So if the accountants are doing this correctly, I should be able to keep track of how much money uh, whatever group has. In this case, it's, it's alpha group. Uh, but that's pretty much enough on the, the military and, and how that uh, money gets converted. Keep in mind the specific requirements. Uh, the, the directions, you know, pretty much state what, what can and cannot happen. You know, you cannot go to war without the declaration of war card. So you are going to need that. That's 10. How do we determine a winner? Well, simply just look at your cards. You know, let's say A is attacking B 
and A has a tank, Air Force, uh, Navy, and an infantry. Uh, let's say they have, you know, this amount. So I'm going to, you know, this one is attacking B. Uh, since they're attacking, they need to have, um, you know, uh, double than what the other side has. Because I'm just going to line up the cards and take away what you have. So let's say in this scenario, uh, B has uh, one of each item. So you have, uh, if you're being attacked, you have home, home field advantage. Uh, for every one you have, the attacking force needs two. So what that means here is they have one tank, they have two, but they have home field advantage, so their one tank gets rid of two. This scenario, same thing. Over here, though, uh, they seem to win in this category of Navy. And then over here, of course, uh, they lose. So in this scenario, I would say that Bravo winds up winning because Alpha did not come up with enough resources. Uh, keep in mind if Alpha, let's take another scenario where Alpha has four of each, four tank, army, air force, navy, whatever, uh, and they have, looks like this. So in this scenario, for every one they have, they would take, out. I would then take two cards away. I would take two cards away, and of course, they've lost their two cards there. Now we have two, two, so now this one, they're all gone. They, uh, Bravo would have won this one, but then uh, Bravo lost because they have won tank, air force, and I guess what's this, infantry over here. So that would say that A is the winner. At that point, A can make a determination about what they want to do. Uh, they could flat out say that they want to implement genocide right here. Um, they could also, you know, we have our nation um you know, you could just say, we're going to send one of our people to be the uh, president of this nation. You could rule them through uh, indirect uh, imperialism. So now all of the decisions being made with this particular nation are basically taking place through the thought process of what A ultimately wants. So you can opt to commit genocide. You can opt to control them through indirect imperialism. Um, you can just, you know, allow them to be free. I don't know why you would attack them. You could force them to become part of your empire. You can do that as well. Or you could simply do uh, nothing. But keep in mind, all of these particular items do come with a cost. So that's it for this particular um, you know, screencast here, kind of going over some of the directions with regard to military hardware. Um, and that's it.